Hello and welcome to this afternoon taste challenge. Uh, they're going to do multi Monday at seven Eastern, six Central. <clears throat> pale ale, but it's a Belgian pale ale. I don't have any Belgian pale ale, and I couldn't get any, so I won't be joining. But I have two bourbon whiskeys. Mm -hmm. I have, um, but you can watch the multi Monday on Bumpy Road Brewery's channel. I have Bellows Kentucky Straight Bourbon Whiskey bottled by Bellows and Company which is really an alias for Luxco, who is now owned by Midwest Grain Products. The Lux family sold out to MGP. All right, anyway, mellowed four years in oak barrels, a name of honor established 1830. That's a true story. Bellows, William Bellows, wine, wine and spirits merchants of New York City was established in 1830. You can do a trademark research on that and you'll see that um but like many other companies they got bought out over the years <clears throat> and they never had their own distilleries anyway they just sourced lots of whiskey gin rum brandy and so but they made a big empire doing that you know more or less so um <clears throat> but it's still around the name's still around Bellows, and I bought this in uh, Marrero, Louisiana. I've never seen it in this town, although I did see it at a Chinese restaurant, Bellows Club Whiskey at a Chinese restaurant on their, you know, their little bar area. But anyway, uh, I got this for an incredibly low price. I was at Savannah Discount with John Anile of Georgia Beer Reviews and David Garlapede, and B Aviation says, what is up? Doing a whiskey taste challenge. So um, the guy was like, hey, my friend, you know, the owner, my one of the owners, my friend, I have this bellows. And I was like, well, I, I, I bought that already. OK. And I said, five ninety nine. It's really cheap for a liter, but I have it already. But then something made me look again. And I said. Straight bourbon, because I had the bellows club whiskey and the blended. Similar ecro kind of like pale yellow white label with the black but in and, uh, and some uh maroon red and but then i saw straight whiskey i said woof and i went and said can you check the price uh, and the lady said 5.99 i said i'm i'm buying progressive discussions hello j p m good to see you on this afternoon so for 5.99 a liter who in the world wouldn't buy that so i said i'll buy it maybe trash but I didn't suppose it would be trash. And as it turns out, it was hard, far from trash. Wasn't the world's greatest. It's not the world's greatest bourbon, but <laughs> it's certainly pretty good. And for $5.99 a liter, crazy, right? And now I went back a month later. You know there wasn't a single bottle left for that price. You know that. Now here's Larceny, $26 a bottle. All right. But we got it for $13 at bro mart b e b r e a u x b r e a u x bro mart that's the name of the family bro also spelled b r a u d um strange thing what is this stuff um my friend david told me i oh, got larceny for 13, what's the normal price? So I looked it up, total wine. I says 26. Oh, what a great deal. But I told David, I said, I don't really want it, even if it was $10, because I have so much of a back stock of bourbon. I just don't want it. I have too much. He's like, all right. I just thought I'd pick you up some. I said, don't worry about it. But then he brought me some anyway. He said, I bought you some anyway. It's only 13 bucks. I said, well, I appreciate it, but I don't really need it. But anyway, it's got a pretty heavy glass bottle, pretty glass bottle. So let's look at the real price. All right. Not these crazy off the wall prices that we get here. The normal price for Bellows for a liter is going to probably run you about $16. Okay. So all right, about 16 bucks for a liter. Normal price. You say, oh, no, and you might be able to find it for 12. Yeah, you might, but you probably won't. All right. Larceny, $26. So is the Larceny really going to be $10 to $13 better? More like $10. Oh, 
I don't know, it's higher proof, 92 proof. Um, it's weeded, meaning wheat is the second grain after corn. You know, bourbon has to be mostly corn. That's the law. It has to be at least 51% corn. It can be 100% corn. That's fine. But it has to be at least 51%. The other 49% can be anything. It can be unaged grain spirits, corn that was distilled and blended in. But it, then it's called blended whiskey. It's not straight bourbon whiskey. It's blended bourbon, which is, is a thing. Um, it could be 51% corn and 49% wheat, 51% corn and, you know, 20% wheat and 20% rye and then some other grains like barley whiskey. So that it, it, it's all as long as it's 51% corn and it's aged and new, never before used charred oak barrels, it's bourbon. Now, if you age it at least two years in those, then it's straight bourbon. Okay. Uh, Daniel Wells says, hello, sir. Hi, says Tr Chris Stroud. Do you keep the bottle from the first beer you ever drank? Did, did I keep? No, I did not. Well, I did, actually. I did. Um, but then it faded. <laughs> got faded, so I, I threw it out. Uh, I've got the Larceny Barrel Proof. Pretty good stuff. I think that would be too strong for me, uh, Tanner. But um, I mean, I'd try it. I just, I don't think, I, I'm kind of weak. I don't think I can handle it. <laughs> All right. So um, you say, what if you age it in used barrels? You can do that. No problem. No problem. Early times, used barrel. But you can't call it bourbon. You got to call it whiskey. Now, you, you might make the argument, yeah, but it probably, it might taste very similar. Yeah, it's going to taste the same, really. You just can't call it bourbon. Um, early times would be lighter because you've got the second run. It's like taking a tea bag and using it a second time. Now, there's an early times bottled and bond, 100 proof. Still can't call it bourbon because you use barrels. So the law is complicated, but it's not really complicated if you knew it. My first bottle was a King Cobra, but I don't think that counts as a beer. It's a malt liquor. Malt liquor is a type of beer. It's just a strong beer. Um, I used to have a 1996 bottle of King Cobra, but the the uh, the gold started flaking off of it, like the gold part of the label. And then it started looking bad, so I threw it out. It's a cool bottle. The first bottle with a rubber nipple on it, that would be the funny if it was his first beer. Yeah. A baby bottle of beer. My first beer was Foster's, says Chris Stroud. Oh, yeah, from Australia. Oh, well, we get the Australian recipe at least. All right, so let's pour the Bellows, William Bellows. Now, the, the, the modern bottle doesn't have the house fly on it. If you look at the older bottles, they have a house fly. Now, people say, no, that's a, that's a honeybee. If you look at that carefully, I mean, really look at it. It's not a honeybee. It's a house fly, you know, like a fruit fly. You say, well, what does that say? That bellows attracts flies? I guess any bourbon would. You know, it's fermented and distilled grain alcohol. But uh, it's strange, you know. But uh, maybe the new owner said, we don't want a house fly on our label, you know. It was kind of like a famous old um, insignia. You say, no, it's bee, a bee, a honeybee, bee for bellows. I know, but it ain't. Just look at it. I don't care because they don't use it now. It's just a big B, a big letter B. A print B and a and a cursive B together. See the print and the cursive. My first beer was old Rasputin. Some girl gave it to me when I was 17. It was in her dad's fridge, says Tanner. Well, that was a good way to start. Maybe a year or two young, of course, but uh, starting with old Rasputin is a good way to go. I mean, people ask me, what got you into craft beer? I say, nothing got me into craft beer. I just, when I started drinking beer in February 90, 1996 as an experiment, I just said, I'm going to do a project because I like to work on projects, you know, like read the whole encyclopedia. That was a project. So I did it. All the history, government, politics articles. I didn't read about, you know, like reptiles and stuff, but um, you know how long that takes? Go to A to Z. I did a 1993 Funkin' Wagnalls 
Then I got it updated, so I went and did the 98 Funkin' Wagnalls. No, no. Yeah, it was something like that. And then I got a 98 World Book. I should have kept the Funkin' Wagnalls. I think they had better, it was a little bit, their graphics weren't as good, but the content was better. But um, anyway, I didn't, I can't, what am I doing with all these encyclopedias? Read them all the way through. That was a project. Another project was reading every National Geographic magazine I owned which is, in my case, 1923. Well, I have one from 1918, but a continuous run, 1923 to when I stopped getting it in 2017 when it became National Socialist Geographic. But um, I had become that after a couple of years. So another project was beer because I said, oh, people always drink a beer, 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 beer. That's all you talk about, beer. And I never drank beer, you know, really. So in 96, I said, let me see what this whole thing is about. I, I'll try one six pack and if I don't like it, I just won't buy anymore. And if I like it, I'll do a project. So I bought a six pack of the little pony bottles of Miller High Life and I drank it on that back porch and I said, yeah, I could do this. You know, um, I'll just go through, I'll just drink through all the brands. So I bought, of course, Schlitz, Budweiser and so on. And so, but immediately there were craft beers on the market like Rick and Jack's and um, Pelican Brewing and Acadian Brewing. So I just bought all those also. Like I didn't really specify a style. I just bought Stout, India Pale Ale, Pale Ale, you know, what, well, well, whatever they had. So it wasn't a matter of getting into craft beer. It was just I tried whatever they had on the market, which was a whole lot of stuff. Got it. European imports, Asian imports. So it was no kind of like getting used to it. I just figured, well, there's different things. They'll taste different like food. So that's what I did. Like, and that was immediate, uh, basically. Uh, apple cider vinegar is used as bait for gnats and fruit flies when you use sticky traps. Oh, so that makes sense with fermented beverages attracting them. Yeah. It's just strange to put on the label, but actually my first beer was Ice House when I was. Okay, well, I don't want to read that. When you got to be 22, you drank King Cobra. Okay, I was never into drugs or drinking when I was a kid, so I I just did not start drinking beer until I was 27. So I, um, but I, I don't mind. That's just what happened. All right. You would think the larceny would be easy to detect because it's 92 proof. And so you're going against 80 proof, 40% alcohol versus 46. That's a 6% difference. So you would assume it would make a big impact, but it hasn't really. Through these taste challenges, larceny hasn't done that well. Hadn't been a fiasco, hasn't lost really, but it hasn't been winning and stealing the show. So on its own, I gave it a 90 whatever it was, 94, it was an A, but in the taste challenges, it hasn't been distinguishing itself. So, uh, oh, well, it's not my problem. Uh, have you tried any Caribbean beer? Yes, I've tried Banks and Prestige from Haiti and uh, Calique Gold and Calique, the regular Calique from the Bahamas. I know that's not Caribbean, that's the Atlantic, but people just include it because there's a bunch of islands down there. Ice House is a solid great, solid great. Okay, time to get to this. I want to go watch the College World Series, honestly. This this smells basic, like kind of thinned out a little wood bourbon whiskey. It's not bad, but it's just kind of basic. Red Stripe, too. Oh, yes. That's right. From Jamaica. What am I thinking? Of course, I tried so many times in my life drinking a genesee cream ale right now says tana east coast liquor lq lq reviews um we started getting genesee cream ale again east of here not in this town but east okay now you would think the other one would be a lot richer and full nosed nose but it isn't really so the appearance 
Yeah, they're both gold. This one's darker, so you would assume this is the uh, larceny, but uh, I don't remember looking at those beforehand, so I'm not really sure. Probably shouldn't have looked at it, but uh, it just smells like bourbon, like just bourbon, corn, whiskey. You know, that's what bourbon is. Bourbon is corn whiskey. Bourbon is moonshine, except it's aged in straight in charred oak barrels, whereas moonshine is not aged in at all because that was the old legend. They didn't have time to age it. They were on the run from the federal revenue agents, so they had time to distill it, bottle it, and get on the road. Is Bellows a bourbon or a Kentucky whiskey? It's both. It's a Kentucky straight bourbon whiskey. Daniel Wells says NCAA. N C A A. All right. Um, well, Bellows makes all kinds of stuff. Well, under that name, this one is a straight bourbon, but I have Bellows Club whiskey, which is blended, and I have Bellows blended whiskey, which is obviously blended. All right. So, on aroma, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Let's go with the taste. It's pretty intense, charred oak, lots of corn grits. I was thinking about eating some corn grits tomorrow morning, but I think I'm going to eat some uh, an egg and some hogshead cheese. But we'll see. Vanilla, little candied fruit cake, fruit. You know all the concomitant bourbon whiskey things just like all that now wednesday night we're doing rtds ready to drink can cocktails bottle cocktails i've got mine ready to roll 10 percent. watch out baby pint can watch it uh the original club tales from canada so i've got a canadian uh, um, uh ready to drink can cocktail called the watermelon margarita you say oh no bottled cocktails would be fine they could be liquor based or beer based. Doesn't matter to me. You could get Monaco cocktails, cognac based. That's a good one. The cognac, the grape flavored with cognac, um, cognac brandy. That's a nice one, but I don't have it. Could get it easily, but I don't have it. Um, Johnny Neely says he's got some. He's coming if he doesn't have to work late. He's already bought his beer. Oh, okay. I have a bottle of early times that I really enjoy. Yeah, so early times is a bourbon comma, except it cannot be called bourbon because it has one little problem. <laughs> it's aged in used barrels. Now, do a blind taste test. You're probably not going to be able to tell it apart, but it is aged and that disqualifies it. You say, well, it's like a technical issue. Well, it's still an issue. Still an issue. Still an issue. Still an issue. Do you have any thoughts on beer being a foundational element in forming civilization? I've been thinking about that lately. I don't really have any thoughts on that. I wouldn't necessarily oppose it. I got juice, mango, 14%. Oh, man. <laughs> I tried the 10% and those were whoppers, so I can imagine what the 4 I think 14 is too much. 10, I'm, I, I, next time I go to Mississippi, I'll get some more juice. At 10%, percent it'd be fine. I went to Texas last, no, earlier this month, and they had the juice 14, but I didn't buy it. I said, ah. I can't do it. <laughs> can't bring myself to do it. So that one's fine. Not remarkable, but it's very nice. Over here. Same general theme. Charred oak. Light vanilla. Light corn. Light everything. Soft everything. Well, now, 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 now. This is what tricked me up before. Because I got all this char and everything, and I was saying, oh, oh, it's got to be the, the larceny because it's more expensive, so it's going to have a more elaborate flavor, elaborate, elaborate flavor and everything. So, uh, And then when I called it, I said, oh, you got it wrong. I got it wrong about half the time. So, so I say larceny is confounding. 
progressive discussions. Bob's Red Mill Organic Non-GMOs Corn Grits Polenta. Uh-huh. I know where to get that. I know where to get a bag of that right now. And there was a lady in the store I saw one day asking about that very product. She says she was from Croatia. I'm looking for polenta. Polenta. I said, polenta? Yes, because I'm going to feed it to my baby. My baby. She was like, not fat. She was like, sturdy. Like um, a stout, sturdy, Slavic woman. You wouldn't want to get in a fight with her. I mean, you might win, but you're going to get hurt. I mean, it's going to be a it's going to be a contest. You know what I mean? So uh, she was she was looking for polenta to feed her baby. I said, man, if they eat that kind of stuff out there as baby food, you know, like corn grits, making a porridge for the baby. And I showed her what uh, she said. Good. And then that was it. She was gone. But uh, it's a funny story. Was she thick? See, that's a bad term to use because people are thinking I mean like obese or overweight. She wasn't in no way overweight. She was just like that kind of like body style of Eastern Europe, which I call stout. Like you see them working in the wheat fields, you know, with the the um, scarf on their head. Okay. Just kind of like physically strong. Um, this is a tough taste challenge. I mean, I thought, uh, you know, uh, this would be a throwaway because Bellows, it's, I got it for $5.99. It's like inexpensive. Straight bourbon whiskey, but James P. Madonna could tell you that. He got Heaven Hill. Straight bourbon, the green label, and I think he got the black label. They're they're different proofs. And uh, he said, "Shoot, that stuff was good." The only Heaven Hill we get here is the Heaven Hill Quality House blended Kentucky bourbon, Kentucky whiskey, the blended. Not, but we don't get the straight. But we get like this, the Larceny, which is from Heaven Hill. Was she okay? Cheers, Louisiana beer reviews. Hog head cheese pairs well with a lot of things, says Tommy. I did a hog's head cheese pairing with uh, blended whiskey, 101 proof blended whiskey bottled in New Jersey, of all places. When you think of New Jersey, whiskey usually isn't the first thing that comes to mind. And that stuff is a knockout. 101, you play around with that, it's going to play with you. But I gotta say the hogs and cheese work to perfection because all the grease, you know, the, the oil, the grease, the fat helps suck up that powerful product. And I had three big hunks of it from Man Defined Meats in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Not the best, but then I did get it on sale. <laughs> um my favorite hog said cheese is right over there, less than half a mile away. I can walk there. Maybe it's half a mile. I don't think it is. And they, at Wayne Jacobs, they've got their homemade ho homemade hogshead cheese. Naturally, you know, I get the hot. But they only sell it in these huge portions. So I have to cut it in half and save half in the freezer, and then I eat the other half. Oh, man, it's so smoky. It's like a luxurious envelopment of smoke. I don't know what kind of wood they're using in their smokehouse. Hickory and pecan, probably. I mean, yeah, you're going to pay. It's not cheap. Wayne Jacobs does not deal with cheapo products. No way. But it's good, baby. Ooh, we mm -hmm. had both great value. You had, oh, yeah, right. You had the, uh, the, the green label and the black. Have you tried sweet pepper relish on a burger? No, I haven't, but I'd be willing to do it. All right, I, I got to get to the, let's get to, let's cut to the chase because the game is about to start. 
May have already started first pitch. Go Mississippi State. Uh, now, if I was buying either one of these, which one would I buy? You know which one I'd buy. I'd buy the Bellows because it is so inexpensive, but yet I cannot get it anyway. I saw it that one time and I went back and he never had it again. I mean, for $5.99 a liter, you know that thing was going to sell out so fast. Larceny I can get easily, but I ain't really dying to pay $26, to tell you the truth. Um, is the Larceny $10 or $13 better than the Bellows? No, 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 no. No, no, no. It's higher proof. You get drunk into before you get funker. But um, $10? No. No, no way. No way. I'm going to let you pay the $10 or the $13. i am going to keep the money and buy the bellows and be satisfied. That's the way I feel about it. So before I even reveal it, and I'm not very confident at all, but before I even reveal it, I can guarantee you I, the bellows is the winner. So it just goes to show you, you know, you see inexpensive products and you say, mm, it's cheap, wah, wah, boo, boo. Uh, but this is this is a taste challenge. This is not a baby cry. All right. So if you're into baby cry, this is not what what you need to be watching. I had somebody in alcohol legs, but he thought it was baby cry. So he quit. I said, it's alcohol legs. It's not baby cry. All right. Um, I think you can eat everything on a pig except the oink. That's right. If you go to Cincinnati, Ohio, where they have Johnsonville. In Cincinnati, you got so much pork production, they call it porkopolis. They use everything from the pig except the oink. Uh, I'm going to say that I think. Notice I said I think. Hmm. This is a larceny because it seems to be higher proof, but I could be wrong. Aha, I got it right. Yay, yay, look at me. I'm such an expert. I got it right. Although we won't mention the other like eight times when I got it wrong. We'll just focus on the um, 10 times I got it right. See, that's the best way to do it. So the eight times that I got it wrong, we'll just pretend they didn't happen. And the 10 times I got it right, we're going to focus on that. Um, so what's coming up? Well, it's going to happen, but I mean, I can show you if you want to see. But anyway, it's going to happen tomorrow at dawn. Dawn bust. Oh, I got the hiccups. Dawn busters. And then later in the day, I got to do something for when I'm not going to have time Wednesday. I'm going to have to double up because Wednesday I got this. RTDs at 7:20 Eastern Time, ready to drink cane cocktails, which you can get anywhere. But get the get the club tails because it uses cane sugar and natural flavorings, not all this artificial flavoring and high fructose corn syrup and all that bull bull. They don't play that. Geloso, don't play that. All right, um, Bellows. It wins. I could tell them apart, barely, but it does win by virtue of price and quality. Mm. And I'll probably never find it again. <laughs> All right. So I got some exciting things coming up tomorrow, twice. Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday. Um so we're going to be doing a lot of uh, more more whiskeys, but not straight bourbon. Straight bourbon is going to go to go to bed for now. Going to take a little rest. Okay. Does the sweetness of larceny show through in the comparison with a budget bourbon? Um, not really. I think just the fact that 
I could detect maybe a slight or higher proof that higher alcohol level that did it. But uh, uh, otherwise, it was really close. So instead of the Cincinnati Reds, they should have called their team the Cincinnati Swine. That's right. And in the 1950s, during the second Red Scare, they didn't want people to think their team was a bunch of communists, so they changed the name of the team to the Red Legs. So from, I think, 1953 to 59 or 60, they were called the Cincinnati Red Legs. Red Legs. And then they went back to the Reds because people started thinking, yeah, they're probably not communists. All right. Um, considering it's a weeded. Yeah, right. Now, that's the funny thing about it. The weeded did not exemplify itself, which was really confusing to me. I thought, well, it's weeded, so... Oh, I hear... I heard this popping. Fireworks. Oh, I see, for 4th of July. They're already buying fireworks. Um, yeah, so you think weeded... It's going to really stand out, but it didn't. It did not, um, unfortunately. But uh, that was the challenge, part of the challenge. Uh, okay, so we got blended whiskey coming up. I have so many. Uh, this one from New Jersey, I think, I could be wrong. I think it's going to whip everybody. It's the uh, from New Jersey. It's uh, Four Queens 101. So I think it's going to win. I think it's going to win. But uh, every time. It's going to win every time. But I could be totally disastrously wrong. After we do that for about two weeks, maybe three weeks, because I got things to do, you know. Summertime, everybody's going to visit everybody. Everybody's driving here, driving there, doing this, doing that, you know. But, um, <clears throat> So after I do the blended whiskey, then we got to do um, Irish whiskey. And I've got Tullamore D.E.W., which everybody calls Tullamore Dew, but it's actually Tullamore D.E.W., somebody's initials. Don't know a thing about it, so I don't know how it's going to pan out. But I got it for half price. Yeah. I got a $26 bottle for 13 bucks. True story. After we do Tullamore D.E.W., D or Tullamore do as people call it, which I've never had in my life. But I know it's famous, and I know there's going to be a million and one whiskey reviews. It's going to take me forever to watch them. Jameson. Yes, I have to buy Jameson. My daughter let me try some of hers, and it was nice. But I, that's the next one I'm going to buy. Actually, the next one I'm going to buy after Tullamore DEW is Jameson, the famous Jameson. Then I'm going to get the Jameson Black and the Jameson this. And, then, you know, I'm going to do all of that. Of course. I've got to. Then I'm going to do scotch. I've got uh, Dewar's 12 year. And when I tell you the price, you'll swear I'm lying. But I, it's a true story. That's the cheap, the cheapest ever. Believe me. When, when you hear this, when you hear it, you're just going to be appalled. But we did it. We pulled it off. We did it. Um, and my friend David zoomed over here. I've never seen a person drive that fast to, to my town. Um, oh, wait, I forgot. We got single malt scotch. Huh. We have uh, Glenlivet 12, which is probably the most famous single malt scotch in the world. So we got Glenlivet 12, bought a bottle at Walmart, got the old label, wanted to get that. And uh, so that's going to be interesting. Then we got the... Uh, the 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 the, the, the uh, doers twelve year, and then we got brandy, brandy Delacour. You say Delacour? Who the hell ever heard of Delacour? Well, nobody. But um, it's apparently served at all the really well heeled, fancy pants restaurants in New Orleans French Quarter, like Broussards, Galatoires, uh, Hermes Bar, and so on. So well, we'll see about Delacour. And then we've got, uh, after brandy, we've got rum. I've got the uh, Cruzan Blackstrap. And when I tell you the price I paid for that Diamond Estate, you'll say, you lie. You lie. You lie so much. I don't lie. It's not my problem that these companies don't tag their stuff correctly. And then after rum, we've got um, Mezcal. 
Well, I can't wait to try that mezcal. It's a $32 bottle and I got it for $15. I'll, re I'll repeat that. It's a $32 bottle and I got it for $15. That is the truth. Um, then we've got, what you call that stuff, tequila. I've got Montezuma uh, Gold. Well, I think it's all right. And then um, we've got... Um, Oh, then we'll be back to rye whiskey. Rye whiskey, I got a Crown Royal Northern Harvest. What is it? 90% rye whiskey. Oh, I can't wait to try that. All right, last comments. Considering it's a weeded, possibly versus Jameson, definitely the two big Irish whiskeys. You're talking about Tullamore, DEW, and Jameson. But don't forget Bushmills. I mean, Bushmills is pretty dang big. New Orleans should get a Major League Baseball team. They'll never get it, though. They are the oldest Major League Baseball team. They were created in the upper mid-18th century. Yeah, 19th century. Yeah, 1869, there was the Cincinnati Reds. But that team disappeared after one year, and then they came back, back in, like, 1883, and they were the new Cincinnati Reds. So they try to, like, make this connection back to 1869, but... Uh, they can't really do it. Um, the New Orleans Crawdads is a major league baseball team. That would be a good team. The New Orleans Crawfish. Yeah, just call them the Crawfish. Actually, I read a book and it said the Oakland A's were supposed to come to New Orleans. The Kansas City Athletics. Their owner, who was eccentric to say the least. He came to New Orleans. He said, I want to move my team. So the city of New Orleans said, come on down. He said, oh, you got this new Superdome you're building, right? They said, yep, it's under construction. He said, when is it going to be built? They said, oh, maybe 1972. He said, no, I got to move now. I got to move now, 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 now. I'm about to get an injunction from the city uh, court system. They said, well, we don't really have a stadium in 1968 but we might have one in like if we say in four years he said oh no so he went to oakland oakland california said we got one running already the oakland coliseum the oakland raiders been playing here for two years you got it it's right there close to the bay right next to the interstate that they're building so without any kind of thought the guy just says i'll move to oakland so the Oakland A's. Now, 10 years later, he's telling his friends and family, why did I move here? These people don't support this team. This is a fiasco. They had a game one time. They had 800 people at the game. True story, 800 people. But he, he didn't want to wait. So and then he said, I should have stayed in Kansas City. <laughs> My friend's mom bought us homemade mezcal from Mexico, like tastes like gasoline. Oh, well, they probably did mezcal from homemade mezcal. Well, I have some uh, corporate. No, it's not corporate. But it is, you know, like quasi that it's uh, called Sombra. Sombra. It's a pretty well, it's handmade. It's actually handmade because they say on the website that a uh, they, they crush it with a donkey, like a donkey goes around in a circle and he pulls this thing and it turns a wheel and it crushes all the mezcal, the mezcal, you know, bulbs and it get all the juice. Um, so I'm very interested in Sombra, Yovan, the young, it's young on age. There are some older age, but this is the Yovan. So, uh, oh, yeah, I'm very excited. All right, thanks for watching this video production. I'm going to watch college baseball. So uh, the winner, the winner is Bellows, Bellows, Bellows since 1830. You win, Bellows. Sorry, Larceny. Uh, you couldn't steal this one. So <laughs> you couldn't steal this one. You couldn't steal this one. You couldn't steal this one. Couldn't steal this one. Couldn't steal this one. Couldn't steal.
can steal this one. 